I have been the repository of this wonderful archive without knowing what I have. My mother kept every single bit of paper belonging to my father. In an old trunk, there was an album full of photographs. There were some old magazines. There were newspaper cuttings. Till one of the cultural attaches of the Mexican embassy, Conrado Tostado, told me that these photographs are in really good because they are by Tina Modotti. I had no idea what was in my hands. I am Anna Savitri Khan Khoje, the doctor, daughter of Pandurang Khan Khoje. Pandurang Khan Khoje came from a revolutionary family. His grandfather had fought in the uprising of 1857. So he was brought up with the stories of revolution, independence, left India very early in the 1904 or six. I think he first heard of Mexico and, his, and its revolutionary politics in California. And he was there as a member of the Ghadar party. So he had close ties with figures like uh, Lala Hardayal, but also with Mexican anarchists like the Flores Magón brothers. My father basically was a revolutionary. He became a scientist and an agricultural expert by default. The, the idea was planted when my father couldn't do revolution. He said, well, I'll study agriculture. During the First World War, he fought against the British in Iran. But naturally, the whole revolution did not come to any fruition. At that time, the British Secret Service was very, very um, active. They chased my father. They tried to poison them. So he knew his life was at stake. And so he, he went to uh, Mexico. How he reached Mexico, in what condition he reached Mexico, is one of the secrets he never told. So we don't know for sure how, how the decision for him to come to Mexico was taken. We don't know why he came to Mexico. But in 1924, uh, he came to Mexico, and mainly I think it was because he was aware of the country's both revolutionary politics and also the deep concern of official circles in Mexico for uh, agriculture and land reform and all the issues that he was interested in. Then when he finally landed in Mexico, he got the asylum he needed. He was, his life was saved. And that is something that can never be forgotten. Yes. Cancoche met Diego Rivera shortly after he arrived in Mexico, probably in the summer of 1924. They both uh, met, they were working together at the National School of Agriculture in Chapingo. Cancoche, who was a highly trained scientist, was hired to teach at the school and Diego Rivera had been commissioned to paint, to decorate the chapel of the school. This chapel was a former Christian place of worship and Diego Rivera was transforming it into a celebration of communist and revolutionary symbols. And at that time, my father was called the, the great magician of Chapingo, the Hindu savant, because he was making experiments in genetics which had never been done before. And it is likely that Rivera was the one who introduced Kankoje to Tina Modotti. Tina Modotti was herself a communist organizer and a very talented photographer. Tina Modotti offered to photograph all my father's scientific work. I think Modotti and Kankoje, because they were also exiled and they were far away from home, that brought them together and they developed a kind of uh, lasting friendship. I think this comes across, this closeness comes across in the uh, pictures that she took of him. There are some papers in the Mexican uh, Foreign Affairs Ministry where they are, they are asking for extradition from Mexico to United States so that he could be sent back to India. And in India, he was facing a death sentence. But the Mexicans are very loyal. They never, never allowed him to be extradited back. 